In this movie, we're going to take a look at the IT-11 with some extra test sets connected to it. And I just want to go over what we got here. In the back, we have a, uh, a voltmeter measuring DC volts. And down here, we have an ammeter, a microammeter. The first thing I want to do is take a, 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 good, a good capacitor. This, this is one that's rated to 630 volts. And as I crank it up, you can notice that this capacitor uh, very quickly um, uh, fills up and it then shows the voltage on the on the top one that you would also see in an open voltage situation. The power supply on this is such that it's kind of like there's, there's I believe, uh, 600 volts or something coming in and there's a sequence of resistors that drops that voltage to get roughly within uh, the, the values here. It doesn't work terribly well when it's loaded down and, and it's really not designed to be loaded down. There's a maximum current draw of, of two milliamps if I were to short those terminals out. And what we have, if you look at the magic eye, you'll find that at just under two milliamps or, or 2000 microamps, you will start to see the line open and will continue to open it opens all the way at about about a thousand microamps and then you'll still see a, a, a silhouette on the end and that silhouette disappears at about 800 microamps. So after that, after 800 microamps and, and lower, the, the test set really can't read it and it doesn't really have to because we're talking about an extremely obnoxiously small amount of current. But I want to go through real quick and show you how that as the capacitor charges and, and, and you're not really going to see it on this modern one because this modern one it just they just work fantastic it's, it, it's there'll be a blip on the on the screen here the voltage will come up to where it's supposed to be and that'll be the end but we're going to look at some of the older capacitors that i have you know some of the ones that 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 go back to the day here and you're going to see at, at a given voltage how much that voltage drops under the the load of, of such a small amount of current and actually how it improves over time. So we'll get started. And I'm gonna switch this over to, to uh, discharge. I try and get all three in, but I switch that over to, uh, to leakage. And this one I could just turn up. Right now you can see there's no current flowing. And you could pretty much assume that if that's at zero, what you're looking at is the, is the, the no load voltage off of the terminals because there's no current. But I'm gonna turn it up and you can just see some blips maybe maybe at the higher voltages, you know, and, and you saw like a, like a quick blip on the bottom one. It immediately came down to, to zero, zero microamps. So if I, were to, if I were to take a measurement or open up that capacitor, I'd see 191 right there. And, and the, the meter is, is set on 200. Uh, my voltage may be a little low off the variac, but that's not important. So we're gonna ramp this up. And, and on the last one, you just barely saw a blip on the screen. And you can see we're running at 600 volts, which it's which the dial indication is. I found that because of the way this uh, circuit is wired, the higher up you go without any uh, load on the circuit, the more accurate it is because it's going through less resistors. So it's actually off by what two volts, but but that's what you, that's what you're going to see. It's not very eventful. Obviously, this capacitor is perfect. It's not it's not leaking any DC whatsoever at at 600. It's rated for 630. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an older capacitor and see what we get. And, and you'll notice it's going to be quite interesting. Here we have an old Synchro 16 microfarad rated to 150 volts DC. I believe I've taken this out of my uh, Heathkit IM11, not to be confused with this IT11. And what we're going to do is we're going to ramp up the voltage and we're going to take a look at what happens. You'll notice that my meter is, seems to be always showing some really small trace of nothing. That's not important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it to discharge. And you can see, there you go, it settled down to 2.4. And I'm going to turn this up and being mindful, of course, not to exceed 150 volts. But what we're probably going to see is that on 150, it's not going to be any near 150 because current's going to be flowing. And what you're going to notice is, is the current is slowly going to drop and as the current drops, the voltage will increase. Right now you're seeing that in some part here, but to a very small extent. So we're gonna we're gonna ramp this up. And 
right now you can watch the current drop and as the current drops the voltage goes up and give us an idea of, of how many how much uh, current is being passed through this thing and this could go on for a while but what we're seeing is we're seeing 135 volts I got 150 here and the next step is 200 so I don't want to exceed the values of the capacitor because I'll just break it but if we were to spend a good amount of time here and I'll probably come back and see what happens we'll notice that the voltage goes up and the current drops here I've got an old 30 microfarad capacitor it's a multi capacitor but we're connected to a 30 microfarad in the can and the charge should be a lot slower I'm gonna bring this down to zero before I turn it on and what I'm gonna do is I've already tested this one but I'm gonna ramp it up to 450 volts so we can watch what happens both in the display and on the two devices so I'm going to turn this up now. Like I said, I would not do this with a, with a capacitor that I had no idea what its capability was to, to start it on 450, but, but this one is already tested, so it'll be fine. Okay, so here we go. So right now we're reading over 2,000 uh, micro, microamps. And you can see that just as it starts coming down, the eye starts opening up. It should be fully open around 800. And you can see that as the current drops, the voltage does increase. So what we'll do is I'm going to put down the camera and we're going to wait a minute and see what happens. In order for the uh, capacitor to condition quicker, what I did was I cranked it up to 500 volts. And I know that with the amount of current that's flowing through it, the voltage has dropped down to right now 445, 446. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this go. I know this capacitor could go over 450 in testing anyway and I'm gonna bring it back when I'm done back to 450 and see what the values were compared to the ones we saw before so I've been running some extra voltage more current going through it you can see it's discharging right now I have it on discharge so what you're seeing in the voltmeter is is the capacitor slowly discharging through a resistor and what I'm gonna do now is set it up at 450 again and run it and now we're going to see how it looks compared to the first time so here we go i to put this back on micro lamps so we can see So definitely an improvement. So by running current and uh, higher voltage through the capacitors, it is possible to recondition them. Though I, I the price of capacitors and stuff, you know, I just pick these up for, for a couple of pennies. I don't know why I would reuse an old one like this. But just to show that they can be reformed in the, even in this short amount of time. I've got a 0.1 microfarad capacitor rated to 400 volts from the uh, late 1940s went into a national 173 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this right on 400 I'll turn this on. I'm going to start this right on 400 volts and we're going to see what happens when the equipment would turn on and the uh, um, voltages like a plate voltage would be uh, present at a capacitor supposed to block it like a coupling capacitor So right now there's a uh, wouldn't call it wouldn't call it open. There's a significant voltage drop that's being seen on the uh, fluke meter, and at 400 we're actually seeing uh, 317 because the circuits be loading down, and it's taking a, a, a very long time to recover. It may actually go in the other direction, but these are the capacitors that you do not want in a circuit. People talk about reconditioning capacitors and, and, and they'll be fine. 
first of all, physically, they're, they're not very stable. They're, they're wax and they're old and, you know, they're, they're leaking, leaking wax from heat. And I mean, right now it's running now, technically 90 volts under what it's rated at. So what I'll do is, knowing that the circuit is loaded down, I'll kick this up to 450 and maybe we'll get something a bit closer to 400. Actually seeing 350. So, so this capacitor is significantly loading down the circuit here. But yeah, that's why I don't use them. That's why I replace them. One of these does a much better job. And there you go. Still 50 volts under its rated voltage and a significant amount of current is flowing through for something that's supposed to be registering as an open.